And now let me invite our discussant, Stephen Ongina from the University of Zurich. Stephen, the floor is yours. Very good. Uh, pleasure to discuss this paper, partake uh, in this event. Um, uh, Sonke did a really good job of uh, presenting a uh, paper and uh, it investigates, as clear by now, the impact of the California cap and trade program, US plans. It's really nice, has uh, plant level data, and basically what's going to find is that it has a good shock, um, has all the ingredients. Um, and what it's going to find is that financially constrained firms are going to shift emissions. And there is a story uh, to that uh, shift in the sense that they're going to do so with national plans that are underutilized. They're going to do that shift to other states that are going to be more lenient. And the real downside is that in the end, uh, unconstrained firms are not going to reduce or constrained firms are actually going to increase their total emissions. So this is really uh, a shifting of those emissions and uh, to some extent, uh, they're negating this uh, the impact of this, uh, intended, uh, the intended impact of this uh, regulation. Uh, as I already said, it really nicely does. So uh, it uses plant level data. The findings are also in interesting, intuitive, well explained in the paper, it's carefully done. There's a number of uh, really nice uh, specifications. Here and there, the R squares are a bit high, but other than that, uh, I really don't have a lot to say on this paper, also because it was actually recently accepted um, by Journal of Financial Economics, and I think that's, that, that, that's, that's obviously uh, super nice, and, and I think that's, um, to the extent I can even say that, which is, of course, rightfully so, because it's a really nice paper, uh, super well done, super, super great data. So, Always difficult as a discussion to uh, uh, discuss such a paper uh, that somehow is, is, of course, also rounded out. It's there, it's published. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to place it a little bit and link it to ongoing work um, that um, I'm engaged in also that people in Zurich are engaged in. Um, uh, so, and I'm then going to ask a little bit the question where some of this uh, transition risk of going to go is also a question that some people are asking at the end, uh, which firms and banks I'm going to focus a little bit more on the banking sector. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, say, empirical exercises where one looks at differences and in, in some cases changes in, in, in climate regulation. Um, and I'm going to ask the question, who will be shifting activities um, not using the, the loaded uh, regulatory arbitrage uh, wording, but um, who is going to shift activities? Well, so those that have to, those that can, and those that want to, even though uh, in that case um, becomes maybe a bit ideological in any case. So on the vertical axis, we're going to have the real sector and the financial sector, uh, because I'm going to focus a little bit on the role that the financial sector may play. Uh, it actually has an interesting a uh, point here in the in the paper because financial constraints are going to matter uh, as you as you heard um, and so to this extent there may be also a financial sector that could play a role and then I'm going to on the uh, um, um, horizontal axis uh, there is going to be the short versus the long one so the paper that you saw presented is basically that some presented is basically showing that these capital constraint firms are going to do the shifting uh, and um, they're going to do so uh, to the extent that they have um, excess uh, capacity, uh, partly or fully undoing the, um, the, the regulation. And let me now uh, go uh, counterclockwise, uh, because actually a paper um, that looks at the, uh, the uh, change in the EU, so the cap and trade uh, three, um, where we actually find, and, and it's, it's related in the sense that we're going to find that those firms that are actually going to <clears throat> buy these permits are actually going to be able to almost use these permits to lower their own financing cost. And so also again, undoing the intended consequences of this um, regulation. So, so the, the, uh, to, to some extent, the, this permit is now going to be uh, viewed by financiers as positive, and therefore these firms are going to obtain lower financing uh, opportunities, and, and thereby actually uh, being able to ramp up their, uh, their activities. Now, in a paper which is not yet in the public domain, 
um, what we're going to look at is how uh, dieselgate and maybe more importantly uh, local diesel car restrictions are actually going to uh, change the financing uh, conditions and what we're going to find is that captive banks but actually not only captive banks are again are going to offer lower interest rates for diesel cars um, and what they're going to uh, try to do is of course to uh, promote to stimulate the uh, the purchases of these of these cars and again this is this is potentially a, a side effect of this type of uh, local diesel car restrictions that was was a bit unforeseen uh, banks may not be pricing uh, fossil fuel all that much um, and, and maybe more relatedly um, here the, the banks may also uh, finance fossil fuel uh, in more lax countries so to this extent the country policy stringency uh, may play a role in, in, um, in, in the ability, the willingness actually of banks to, to finance. And I'll come back to this point in a second, uh, relating it to, to some of this paper. And then finally, uh, I'm going to end on a, on, a, on a discussion of where some of the uh, fossil fuel, the transition is still going to go and we're going to argue that they're going to go to very big banks uh, and that some of these fossil fuel firms are going to be no longer financed as much by bonds as by, by very large banks. So here we have, um, again, using the loaded word of regulatory arbitrage by firms. Um, now this within firm, which uh, Sonke and his quarters demonstrate um, very, very nicely in their paper, may actually be more difficult on a global scale um, for various reasons, um, but then Clearly, the financial sector may actually uh, play a role in, in, in doing part of this shifting. And so maybe firms in other countries may gain because the banks are going to be uh, shifting some of their financing uh, uh, according to the, to the stringency of, of, of regulation. So this within firm uh, shifting may, may be more difficult uh, on, a, on a global scale and, and of course to be investigated uh, further. Now, one other takeaway could potentially also be that environmental regulation should not focus so much on, on, on outcomes, but actually more on processes. And, and to this extent, that would also uh, partly corner the financiers to, to undo this, um, this arbitrage. Now, what is the role of financiers here during transition? Clearly in the paper, um, I mean, there's, there's, there's no role in the sense that they are not necessarily mitigating the capital constraints, but interestingly, the financiers could have played some beneficial role uh, to the extent that they would have at least partly modulated these uh, these constraints, and that would have uh, reduced the uh, to, to reduce the spillovers. But finance may, financiers may not all, always play this role. Uh, as I already said, uh, if the firm is actually owning a pollution permit, this may actually be used by uh, by firms to to lower their own financing cost and thereby. Uh, uh, increase their uh, polluting activities. And, and the same may be true for diesel car loans that are uh, granted by financiers to stimulate actually uh, purchase of cars that would be necess that would be possibly affected by these uh, restrictions. And then uh, providing uh, more and cheaper financing to fossil fuel firms, especially very large banks seem to be now collecting uh, such exposures. Now, why is this actually that we really see uh, quite a dramatic um, uh, compilation of, of collation of uh, fossil fuel firm risk on very large banks' uh, balance sheets? Partly it could be because to investigate this is very complicated. Is that there's joint with many other loan terms, there's over time across products, across banks, the competition syndicate, syndications are complex. And maybe the banks have sort of a blank spot for this type of transition risk too. Um, maybe they're a bit oblivious to it, they're short-sighted, conservative, careless. But maybe a better story for, for, for the observation that indeed a lot of these transition risks, the very large ones and the fossil fuel and, and, and the very large fossil fuel firms are now being uh, financed by, by the, the, the largest bank in the world is that basically these banks are politically connected and, and possibly they are um, knowing that at the, at the national level, they, they, they feel they are somewhat shielded and they're in control of this transition risk because at the end of the day, uh, all of this comes from the regulatory side and to the extent that these banks do have this sense that they can control this up to a certain point, um, they may actually be um, uh, doing the right thing by, by starting to finance these uh, 
this transition risk. But of course, relatedly, some of these too big to fail banks also know that their balance sheets are actually too big to strand in the sense that once the, once the uh, financing is there, um, it's going to be uh, very, very, maybe more difficult to bring these uh, banks to, to yield. And so this is basically last slide, this fossil fuel firm exposure on the bank, bank, bank's balance sheet may actually make those uh, too big to strand and, and picture very dramatic projection from Tasmania where these, these mammals were actually not too big to strand and they're not dying uh, the hammers of them. In any case, this is a very nice investigation. I, I really couldn't bring myself to start, you know, um, pick, nitpicking on, on, on estimation details. All the ingredients are there. Uh, the publication is there. Uh, try to create some value in the context of this uh, conference with a review uh, slightly uh, biased towards some of the things that we're working on here in, in the shop in Zurich. I was almost going to say the sweatshop in Zurich because it's really warm here. <laughs> Um, uh, of these spillover issues. And so a lot of success with uh, the, uh, your investigation and, and, and future papers, looking forward to, to reading them. Uh, I, I'm sure many of your colleagues uh, have the same opinion. Thank you very much.